I have a breakfast story for you. Very brief here. I guess, is it breakfast? I got it twisted. So last night, late night, I'm like, ooh, I can get some groceries delivered so I can have some pancakes in the morning because I wanted pancakes. I It's been a while. So what did I do? I got the ready pancake mix. I got fresh blubberies. And here's where it gets crazy. Call the cops. I don't care. I got apricot jam and syrup and butter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blueberry pancakes with apricot jam. Oh, I love it. I love, I love fruity, sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, and boys, let me tell you, I couldn't, apparently my body decided it couldn't even wait because I went to bed, okay? Woke up in the middle of the night, okay? Get As you do when you're old and you have a swollen prostate, all right? I sat there and I went, you know what? I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna get wacky with it. I'm still young. I can do what I want. I'm, I'm still young, baby. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have middle of the night pancakes. You know, I'm gonna have a fat guy moment. I'm gonna do it. Get up middle of the night, start whipping up some pancakes, and I inhale those bad boys. Boom, boom, apricot, jam, whatever you wanna call it, apricot, syrup, blueberries, ooh! Went back after a few minutes, letting it settle, laid down in bed, six minutes later, threw it all up. <laughs> you know, don't let them say, don't let them shy you away from doing things you want to, boys. All right? But I will give some advice. Wake up pancakes, not it. Also, a bit, this, is a, this is just a straight up fact too. Zero calorie meal. Let's go. That's an old moment, unk moment. It really was like a, oh man, I'm, I'm built different. I'm built incorrectly. Purging isn't good. You're right. Your Oz Ozempic sickness. All of that is all true. Yeah, no, my bulimia and Ozempic are working well together. No, but real talk, if you diet for long enough, which I, I'm not like strict, okay? I just eat better now in generally. I was strict for a while. Just eat better in generally. But I've noticed like the, the real fat guy meals, like waking up in the middle of the night to have pancakes. It does not sit like it used to, bro. Dude, there's, there's meals where I used to be able to just inhale them and now... One of them is Panda Express. I can't keep Panda Express down anymore. Like, not truly, but it always does make me feel sick, whereas before I could get the, the three-plate side. Panda Express is just so mid and good at the same time. It's mid-disgusting. I don't know. Mid-delicious disgusting? Is that even... Anyway, that's my. Hey, Africa since we're talking story. food, what's your go-to Chipotle order? We just got one where I live, and I'm trying to get thin, like wubby. Okay. You're going to hate this. You're going to hate my go-to Chipotle order because it is not financially responsible. It is it is seriously eat like a dog mentality. First, let me clarify. Don't eat at Chipotle. Chipotle is dog shit. Chipotle, one day, if my life falls apart, Chipotle, I'm coming for you. Seriously. Like, watch the fuck out. Because I'm waiting to snap, and it's going to be on Chipotle. So let me get that out of the way. Don't eat at Chipotle. It's dog shit. Right? However, the only reason is because... I can afford to spend money on a stupid thing like this, and it's convenient and easy. There are better, like, rice and meat options, I'm sure, especially if you live in a po densely populated city. I th Here's what I get from Chipotle, and legit, it has helped me lose weight. Same order every day. Sometimes, if I'm feeling spicy, I'll put something on it, but this is it. Rice, it's the bowl. I get the burrito bowl. Rice, chicken, the hot sauce. Rice, steak. The hot sauce. Rice, steak, the hot sauce, cheese. It's, it's under 500 calories. So that's what I get. It's like 13 bucks. It's not worth it. And uh, that's my Chipotle order to lose weight. Everything else there, like tortilla or all the, all the other things, it's all just calories, baby. Rice and meat will fill up your fucking stomach. No, but Chipotle sucks. It, it's so overrated. It's, you know what Chipotle is? It's like LA white guy. I like Mexican food. But it's like you have no clue what good Mexican food is. You have no, you have no clue what you're talking about. Sorry, if you're if you love Chipotle, I will instead of being mad at you, I will give you the ignorant pass of like maybe you just haven't tried good Mexican food yet. Is there real Mexican food? There is real Mexican food in L.A., brother. L.A. You, I can say a lot of bad things about L.A., but L.A. has food options. Listen, all the criticisms of L.A. you cannot criticize. They got store options. They got food options. You can't. You can't. That is the the good side of having an overpopulated city. Just saying.
But really though, they got everything, except public transportation options. God, LA, God. San Diego is basically, and LA are basically Mexico. San Diego, very Mexican, you know? It's just, the, the thing is, it is it is cubed chicken and cubed, cubed steak. You wanna know how, you wanna know how like, okay, only use me blade, prolific sexual offender. He has a quote, the only ever thing he ever said that I agree with. This is back when Only Use Me Blade was just a guy running around with a knife in in a, a Call of Duty. He was like, I am so lazy sometimes to the point where it's more work to be lazy about certain things. And an example of that is when it comes to making myself food. Last night, I cooked up a fantastic fried rice dinner that required a lo chopping up all kinds. Of, it was like a hour long process of just prep and it was great and it was so good, ready to go. All right, I did all that. So not lazy in that regard. Good, right? What was the sauce? Had some soy sauce, some oyster sauce. Anyway, cooked all that up and I have leftovers for the week. It's looking good. This morning, my I'm sitting at my desk and I'm, I was doing something. I'll tell you what I was doing. Sitting at my desk working on something. And I'm like, okay, it's about time to eat. I should probably eat. And my brain went, you can get up and you can go to the kitchen and you could heat up the food you had and you can, and it'll be cheap and free and it's right there and you'll have it in five minutes. Instead of doing that, I was like, I don't want to get up and I don't want to have to spoon through cold rice because that's kind of, it's kind of annoying to spoon through cold rice. So I just was like, I'll just order Chipotle instead. <laughs> and it's like, laziness that doesn't even make sense it's so like bro what do you mean you're so lazy Wubby. i made the damn thing last night which is 10 times more work it's like super dissonant laziness there's no logic to it it i made the whole meal all i could have done is walk up and had more today i just yeah, i'll do chipotle it's faster i could just get up and grab it then i do this and i hear you is it adhd i don't know what it is that's Chipotle addiction. It's ADHD for sure. I think, I'm sure I have it. I'm sure, honestly, a lot of people over the years have told me because, dude, I, I was on a fucking, ASL? you want to know where it really gets me? Your city a, needs at least 5% Hispanic population to get good Mexican food. We got more than 5%. Higher the percent, the better it gets. What's, hold on, what, what percentage of the popu San Diego population is Hispanic. I'd guess a lot. You guys ready for this? Okay, that's a number. What what do I do with a number? Uh what what is the, I have a number, but how okay, I guess I'll look up the San Diego San Diego population. Any guesses? San Oh my god. It's Mexico City. The population of San Diego is 1.3, 1.4 million, and we have 400,000 Mexicans. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And you know what? We do have really good Mexican food here. <laughs> What's your favorite real Mexican dish? How do you define real? I don't know. Here's my thing. I don't know. I might be a very Mexican-American cuisine kind of guy. I don't know. But the reality is, all I know is that anytime I go to a Mexican restaurant, whether it's super American or it's like they don't speak English, the food there fucking slaps. There are very few things that I will get served to me at a Mexican spot. Oh, have you tried this? No, I haven't tried it. Fucking bangs. ADHD confirmed by getting one guide mid ADHD. Damn, I'm doing it again. Fuck. But it does benefit the stream because it helps me keep talking. Earthworm Jim is the, the, you know what that game reminds me of? That's my divorced dad game. Let me explain. So back in the day, Let's overshare. Earthworm Jim is my divorce dad game. Basically, back in the day, you know, the story is actually super dark. It's not dark. It was well lit. Uh, you know, dad was there to take me to the fair and dad was there when uh, mom, you know, wasn't. But that's OK. God bless her. She's doing great now. But the point is, young kid didn't know what to do. Life falling apart, had a Game Boy Advance. I think it was OK. And summer vacation. Woo! We cooking in summer. Dad can't leave home alone because too young. So what dad do? Dad bring with son to Chula Vista while dad goes and works at grocery store and leaves me in uh, in uh, in the break room at work, which you know what? That probably sucks. So shouts out to dad. I'm glad I was a good kid because I just sat there 
and I had my Earthworm Gym game on my Game Boy, and I just fucking slayed. So now, every time I think of Earthworm Gym, uh, I, I think of hanging out in the break room for eight hours <laughs> and walking around the store and like, oh, I remember, oh my God, I just had a, this is a memory so deep, I don't even know if I wanna share it. I re remember some of the employees that worked there would give me a, a, a couple bucks um, to dance Life size for Dewey or child Oh my god. No, 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 chat. That was, oh no, that was fully Dracula fucking that up. No, that was, he said child po rn. And, and the, and Dracula said, oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what sucks? That came in at such a bad time because it ruined my joke. Nobody paid me to dance in the break room, but it got cut off with something worse. So now I'm just stuck with you guys believing I was paid to dance in the break room. I was not paid to dance. What really happened was sometimes other employees there would give me like five bucks and they said, you can go anywhere in the store and get whatever you want. And it was really fun. And they would only thing they would make me do is dance. <laughs> Where do they touch you? Everywhere. It was so fun. We had played games. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. No, it was really fun. Like, really? I, I don't know. This is... This doesn't sound really lame. You know how it's like, My daddy was a carpenter, so I know my way around a saw and a wood thing and a thing with wood in it. And, uh, and I know my way around a grease elbow and a varnish for the narnish. I know my way around a sniff sniffer because I grew up in the shop and my daddy's daddy grew up in the shop, right? Or like, my daddy was a mechanic and I know my way around an oil tuner, transmission, fixer upper, Honda Accord, Civic Duty, right? For me, that really was my daddy... My daddy worked in a grocery store, so I know my way around aisle 15. I know my way around the pharmacy section. For whatever reason, I feel like rather comfortable in a grocery store. Now, hold on. Let me get ahead of this. But what be fat joke? Okay, so now we can move past that. Bro, we can tell you know your way around a grocery store. I beat you to it. You, you know what? I may be fat, but your brain's fat. You move slow mentally, and you can't fix that. You can't fix that. I can go to the gym. What are you gonna do? Be 46 and go to college? I miss Fat Wubby. I got news for you. Surprise! He's still here. Things do make sense now, Wubby. You realize that, you know, you wanna know something crazy? You realize I'm not fat because of the grocery store. I'm fat for every other food decision I've made. In fact, if I were as loyal to the grocery store as I had been fast food the last like eight years, we wouldn't be having this conversation. How are you gonna get shamed? for eating at a grocery store. That's where you're supposed to go to lose weight. Um, anyway. Oh, dude, I've been, uh, I've been going to the grocery store a lot, like a lot more than I used to. Just to, it's, 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 it's not a safe, I'm not doing it to save money, but I am saving money that way. Um, and it's more so for health, whatever. I don't want to talk about that. But the point is there's a dude and I bet he's watching right now. There's a fucking dude now who works at the grocery store that I attend almost nightly. I go there once a night um, because I go late, I go after the gym, um, and it all works out. And he is there now every single fucking night. And uh, uh, he, he's, been, he's been staring at me as he's sweeping. And I've, this is a wholesome story. This is a wholesome story. Um, he gave me a couple bucks to dance, and um, I just realized that's what all of you guys do. You're no different than the break room guys from 20 years ago. You're giving me money to dance in a different font. Anyway, I had this moment and, and hey, dude, if you're watching, just know if the dude is watching, I, I don't know your name. I never wanted to learn it because then I humanize you. The dude who came up to me at the grocery store two times now, um, I want you to know that you are merely a prop in a storytelling story segment I'm gonna do on stream right now. Okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm kidding, but I did have this moment. So he comes up to me and he's like, hey, are you Wubby? I've been noticing you coming in here. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, oh, can I bother you for a selfie? I'm like, sure. I'm like, I'm sorry if I stink. I just worked out. And he's like, sure you did, fatso. I'm like, you're kind of fat yourself. We didn't say that. And he's not fat. He's beautiful. Anyway, we take a photo, whatever. And then as I'm walking around the store, he's like doing his, he's, he's a bagger. Okay. He, he wor he's a bagger at the grocery store. I had this moment that I was like, holy shit. Never... 
in a million years. Ten years ago, did I think when I was bagging groceries at a grocery store working for like what 10 bucks or whatever it was, I don't know, it was almost nothing. Never did I think that 10 years from then, as I was putting bread in and some old bitch was getting mad at me because I smushed her bread with my cock. Never did I imagine that I'd be back in a grocery store 10 years later, just doing my own thing, shopping on my own, and a bagger, my same position, would come up to me and ask me for a photo because they enjoy what I do. And you know, I'm not like flexing or nothing or, or, or k bat. Why is everyone caught up on the word bagger? The point I'm making was it was this weird moment where, where I was like, damn, like, I need to like, like, it, I, it made me appreciative. It made me really think. It made me really happy. And it made me think like this kid who I'm talking to, I mean, God, I, I look at him and I think he's probably my age, but then I think about it. I'm like, well, but you're getting old. Like you're not the age of these baggers anymore. Like this, this is probably a kid. It's probably in his early twenties, late teens, maybe even right. This dude's listening. He's like 36. Um, and I'm like, this guy might want, like, I hope to, hey, to the kid who came up to me. I hope you achieve your dreams and I hope one day you're in the grocery store and I hope one day you see a bagger. Like, it's just weird, okay? It's weird to go back to the place where you worked and see the people doing the job you used to do and one of them recognizes you and one of them takes a photo with you. It's surreal. It's odd. It's, it was, it made me very, very thankful. And, um, and I'll have you know, I'll have you know, I took the cart and I walked it as far away from the lot as possible because I knew it would build character. That's how I made it. I had to grab, no, I did I don't do that. Oh, this is it. Oh, damn it. That's Burger Planet. I might kill myself and you can't stop me. You know what really sucks about this photo actually getting me? The reason why this photo got me was because this is the exact photo we took at, at the grocery store. Like, almost exactly. I was behind him. He took a selfie. Uh, it, man. And he honestly, he looks like that. He's, he's, a, he's a heavier set beard guy. kind of looked like me. Man. Whatever. We move on. Fuck it. All right, this is kind of funny. The title it does get me, I will admit. Well, we died in my dream. Like, immediately, my first thought is, who the fuck cares? I do like reading them deep down, but they are a waste of fucking time. Wubby died in my dream. It all started out just as a regular stream. Wubby was hyping up the chat, stay, staying. It's a home alone boys night. Do you not proofread? Hyping up the chat, staying. It's a home alone boys night and that he's got big plans for tonight. Would I, I kill myself on stream? He started out yapping and talking about random one guy until it started to do the hit, hit, hit. Halfway through. Oh, God. Halfway through, he went, oh, God, stood up, clutched his chest, and collapsed. That's a good way to go. I'm just like, a, hit, 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 hit. Oh! Um, as he fell, his fist slammed into the desk. Uh, oh, he slammed into the desk, face first, hitting his keyboard, and <laughs> he switched to the foot cam as he fell. That's crazy. He crumpled onto the floor and where he laid motionless for, on the ground. Uh, there was just a green mass face down in front of the camera for about 48 hours? What? Do you think everyone in my life would just be like, give it a day, give it a day. Give it, now give it one more day. <laughs> While the chat spammed subs and wubby sevens until Peanut, of all people, sprinted into the room and cut the stream off. Can I be honest with you? I kind of love that as a stream. Okay, let me say this now. If I do if I do that and collapse, and if during the collapse it cuts to a floor cam, only if it cuts to a floor cam, it is a bit, do not call 911. If I collapse and it doesn't cut to the floor cam, save me, I'm dying. Okay, is that fair? That would be one hell of a retirement stream. Just fake my own death. 
Someone comes in, turns off stream. You got to give subs. That's the way it works. Okay, chat. Originally tonight, I was going to do something. You would not like be to... able to last one hour without food, let alone 48. Tiff, tiff, tiff. Hey, you guys want to see something cool? Okay, hold on. That was so mean. It was, that was just so, that was a crazy drive-by that, it, it genuinely sounded angry. Okay. That was crazy. You know what they say though, right? They say, hif, 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 hif. brother, I got to get defensive now. I don't even eat on stream, bro. I don't eat on stream. Cause I think it's so boring and weird and it, it takes up time. Yeah, and eating on stream and not eating on stream is really fucking hard, guys. I really think you guys should support me. You know, not eating on stream is so difficult. Um, shots fired, Hassan. Shots fired, dude. Hassan streams for like twelve hours. If you're gonna stream for twelve hours, you're gonna eat. All right. How often do you brush your teeth? Once a day. Uh, once? Yeah, once a day. What do you mean? Wh why is everyone blowing their mind over once a day? What are you guys? What? What's guys? You're really autistically focusing on the teeth. And I. What do you want from me? What? What? Is that mind boggling? I, I brush my teeth once a day. I have like the expensive Philips, not Philips Hue, Philips toothbrush, like the nice one. I, I work that shit. I let it ride and I go to bed like an adult. What do you, twice a day? What do you do it right before heading to school with your little backpack? Huh? Your little lightning McQueen? What do you mean? Well, you have bad morning breath. I, I, what are you talking about? Morning breath freak i can recognize that morning breath like i do recognize that my mouth has a morning breath to it and that goes away within an hour because i eat a meal or have some sort of morning thing either i wake up in the morning and either if if i'm out i'm having a coffee if i'm at home i'm having my breakfast i'm so like, gross is it that common to brush your teeth you know, we don't even need to talk about the Ludwig thing. You I, Clearly, nobody gives a fuck, which that works for me. You guys care way more about the brushing. Do you guys brush your teeth twice a day? Two times minimum? Chat, you're being autistic. I can't lie. Carlos, I'm so glad you're here to like actually make me feel like a human again. There's no way. I recognize that I'm not. I wouldn't even say I'm in the majority. I'm not going to say I'm in the majority. I won't say that. But the, a chat is acting like I'm on an island by myself of like disgust and vile morning is the most important one wubby two times minimum a day is crazy but yeah twice a day is average um yeah but like that's i'm okay with that though because here's the thing so many of these motherfuckers in chat being like i brush my teeth twice a day and you use this dog shit non-electric thing from 1918 that barely brushes your teeth and damages your gums and you get stigmatitis in your hair or whatever it's called okay so like I'm sorry, but I believe my f my freaking drill takes care of my. Oh, what do you want from me? I don't get cavity. Like, what do you I'm sorry. When I go to the dentist, they're like poggers, dude. What do you want from me? Y'all have gross mouths. Okay, come on now. Uh, do you have the $200 purple one? What does it matter? What does it matter? What color it is? All I know is I saved like 8% because I bought the color that apparently people don't want. Y'all are afraid of looking gay, bro. I don't care if there's like a pink device going in my mouth. I saved like eight bucks. We brush our teeth at night to keep our teeth. We brush our teeth in the morning to keep our friends. Joke's on you. What friends, bro? Do you floss? Not often. Not often as I should. I'm not going to lie to you. Not not as often as I should. I do. Uh, I think I end up flossing like once a week. Honestly. Like Jesus Christ. What are you, a dentist? You guys have derailed everything I wanted to talk about. And I'm actually mortified over it and you have totally thrown off my groove uh for for stream i was in a great mood and now i'm gonna talk to hey contestant number one what's your name cool cool so how often do you brush your teeth and like the highlight channels gonna be like wubby's got like a teeth thing going on like what's going on with him and the highlight editors are not gonna fucking keep this part in either so i'm gonna do like this weird psycho fucking teeth guy sorry i'm losing my cool i'm okay though do you shave your ass i don't have shut up shut up Shut up! No, I'm not talking to you anymore. Shut up! You got nasty ass teeth germs? Okay, hold on. First off, first off, show your teeth. <sighs> Man. Okay. No, I don't even have a good excuse for where I don't brush my teeth twice a day. I don't do that. I just don't do that. I don't do that. I don't know. What do you want from me? I don't do that. I've been to the dentist many times and I've never brushed my teeth twice a day, and my teeth health has always been very positive. 
What do you want from me? Check the poll. No, majority said no. Oh my God, you're all fucking stupid. Three times a day, bro. Do you wipe till you bleed? You crazy, bro. It, okay, I'm sorry, but there is cognitive dissonance going on here. There is. I'm sorry, but there is. And I'm gonna explain to you why, okay? There are too many of you motherfuckers in chat right now that draw the line at brushing teeth, which by the way, typically, unless you have like some sort of issue that causes genuinely bad breath, really won't affect people around you, right? Typically, if you brush your teeth once a day and you don't have, I mean, really, it doesn't. But you the same motherfuckers. When was the last time you washed your sheets, sanitized your phone, uh, cleaned the inside of your car? You have so much dissonance in your brain, okay? Because you'll draw the line here because it's icky to you. But then, but then, I know, dude, I know people who are like, neat. I shower twice a day. When was the last time you washed your sheets? Well, I do that like once a month. Ew, you fucking pedophile. Ew. How often do you sanitize your phone? I know people who have never sanitized their phone. Never. When I go out, if I have been out for more than a single errand, errand, my phone is getting sanitized when I get home. End of the story, right? Sorry. See, look, there's people right now. So you sanitize your phone? Who the fuck does it? Y'all ain't never know. You ain't never been germophobic. I know people who pump gas and don't clean their hands. Sickos, bro. Go brush your teeth an eighth time. I don't care. I'm not going to shake your hand. Will be stinky? I'll vote yes on that. What does that change? I'll vote yes on that twice. Do you drink soda? What are you, a what are you even asking now? <laughs> um, same. I use disinfectant wipes. Dude, I... I can, you know what? Okay, chat. Here's what I'm going to do. This is why you're always sick. Oh, so now I need to start exposing to more germs. I'll brush my teeth even less. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. But do you enema? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I do drink soda. I love I love soda, like zero soda, though. I don't really like... Sugary soda has become too sugary to me. I Like, it's, it's weird. Let me just say this. Let me defend myself. God, this is a spicy start to stream, boys. This is crazy. This, this, is, this is fascinating. I will say this, chat. I will say this. I am happy to start brushing my tweet tweet. I am happy to start brushing my teeth twice a day. Okay. And I will start tomorrow morning with the wake up brush teeth. All right. And I'm going to ask the people in my life if they noticed a difference. All right, and I ask the people in my life to please be genuine with me, okay? And I will do this for two weeks, and I will see if I notice a difference in my, with the whiteness of my teeth, the quality of my breath, my mouthfeel in the morning, because as of right now, I want you guys to understand something. The idea of making my mouth minty, which by the way, people may not know this, I hate mint. I hate strong mint. I do not like that flavor. The idea of making my mouth minty first thing in the morning sounds fucking annoying. I, I when I wake up in the morning, okay, let's say let's say I have no plans for the day. So I wake up and I waddle over to my computer. I'm gonna have a gamer subs or maybe a soda pop or some sort of flavored water. Now all that's off the table if I got minty mouth. Maybe I'll have a coffee. Nope, minty mouth. So I gotta sit here and I gotta drink water. Am I a fucking caveman? Am I a caveman? I gotta drink water, bro. <laughs> now I'm now I'm really just pissing off everybody else. Else, I don't like water. Plain water actually drives me crazy. Now I'll say this: if I'm dehydrated, not like medically, but if it's like I was in I was in Monaco, the shithole Monaco, the billionaire shithole, which I think should be nuked from space, and then we should redistribute the wealth to everyone who's ever suffered in Monaco. When I was in there, right, it was humid and a million degrees. And I wasn't like medically dehydrated where I needed like fluids, but like I was thirsty as fuck, right? I don't want a soda. I don't want anything. Give me a nice ice water. Like there's nothing, nothing hits better than an ice water when you're like after a workout, just a, oh, I feel this bad, but just water, ice, oh, nothing better. I don't hate water. I don't hate water. I want to be clear. Water on its own as like my passive drink or my dinner drink, I hate it. it drives me crazy. I hate it. Oh, I'll have the I'll have the steak. Mmm, little side of little side of rice. Ooh, 
Ooh, delicious. Oh, and I'll take that on an ice water? Fuck no. It drives me crazy. But hot day, I'm at the county fair. I see an ice water stand. Done. Chug it. Easy. I like to think I, I bridge the gap a little bit. I'm honest. I'm honest. Brother is scared of water. I'm literally not. I just told you I love water at the right time. I'm drinking water right now. Mixed with uh, Gamer Sups, Bacardi, and Sunkiss Zero. This right here, this looks like piss pond water, but let me tell you, it goes down easy. Mm. There's probably five shots in here. Whew. Caught my GF of 13 years fucking my best friend last week. Your streams have helped a lot so far, thanks. Hell yeah, man. <clears throat> Hell yeah. Not the not that second. The first part was bad. The second part, I'm glad that's helping, my man. Hey, but you know what? You get out of this. <clears throat> this is you. There is a silver lining to all this. You get to be lonely now. But for real, that sucks. <clears throat> but like, here's the thing, right? She was only 13. No, idiot. They would've been together for 13 years. Now, but for real. For real though, you just got to clean house of like snake people that have been hiding in your life. It's that simple. You move on, right? You got to clean house of snake people. You don't even need to worry about them anymore. You don't need to worry about them fucking up something else. You get to move on. Clean clean slate. That's actually such a big like life upturning. You get to you could <clears throat> you could be a criminal. This could be your moment. Now play Baldur's Gate for 13. This years. shit is sick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in Spirit Halloween and I just walk past one of the sensors. How are your teeth? All right, guys, I have a bit of a confession. So, uh, no, wait, that wasn't the confession, idiots. That wasn't the confession. So I was supposed to brush my teeth twice a day to test it and I forgot about it until today and I realized I'm like, oh, I have streamed today. Let me start thinking about stuff like that I need to write down. And I went, oh, fuck, I'm supposed to be brushing my teeth twice a day. So I brushed my teeth this morning when I woke up, <clears throat> maybe like an hour or two after I woke up when I remembered. And uh, that's the that's it. So you're, we're going to have to get a tweet. <laughs> How was it? Um, here, OK, is this I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be the streamer now that my audience wants me to be. OK, I'm going to be the wubby that my chat <clears throat> is expecting here for the big exciting. OK, ready? Here we go. Guys, I gotta tell you, I brushed my teeth this morning and wow, everything has been going right. I've been getting so much pussy. My mouth feels great. My teeth feel great. That pain in my assholes has been, it's completely gone for me. I, it, everything has worked out. This brushing my teeth one more time. I went to the supermarket and I had, you're never going to believe this, uh, the hot Kardashian, the old one, the one who's Kim came up to me and my breath smelled and it was good and i now i have a follow-up dinner with her because i brushed my teeth is that what you want here you don't know how it really went i brushed my teeth and then i sat here going ah my mouth tastes like mint for the next two hours and i can't uh, have my soda pop that i want cool i'll just sit here no it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the the what bro, uh, well, well, caitlin what's her name i almost said bruce sorry get the flavorless one jesus christ what, uh, how much money do you have? They make flavorless toothpaste now? Get a tongue scraper? What the fuck? They have non-minty toothpaste? That's crazy, though. <laughs> That's too much. You guys have to understand, I'm, I'm like my father, and I'm realizing this as I get older. I'm a creature of habit, and um, I've been using the same toothpaste for years, uh, and you guys are like, oh, there's all these toothpaste. I think for me... If I get used to and comfortable with something, um, I will ignore all technological advances of that something uh, until somebody blows my fucking mind eventually. I'll give you a few examples. Toilet paper. My dad always bought shitty cheap toilet paper, and it wasn't until years after I was done living with him that uh, it was brought to my attention that better toilet paper exists and isn't the end of the world. And I was like, oh shit, blew my mind. And I feel like I'm like that with toothpaste, too. I get the same toothpaste that was in my dad's home growing up. This could sound really sad, but I learned this in my 20s. Wiping your ass doesn't have to hurt. They have toothpaste now that will brush your teeth for you. It's like scrubbing bubble shower cleaner for your teeth. 
You're fucking lying to me. That doesn't make a lick of sense. That doesn't make a lick of sense. You gotta get a bidet? I... I, guys, I'm gonna fucking scream. I don't want a fucking bidet! I, 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 I find, I don't want wet asshole! I don't want, I don't want to get my asshole super soaked! It's life changing? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I don't get it. I've tried, I've used a bidet one time in my whole life and it scared me and felt a little violating. Did you try them in Japan? No, because I've tried them before. Nobody has a response for this. Nobody has a response for this ever. I don't like the feeling of water blasting onto my asshole ring. Please respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> Me and like the most serious argument. If somebody wiped human shit on your arm, would you wipe it off or go take a shower? What a fucking retarded thing you just said. That is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard a human say in my life. If somebody wiped human shit on my so if a homeless person ran by and wiped shit on my arm, okay? The difference is my arm doesn't have a shithole. A hole that literally Jesus Christ attached to me that its only purpose is to clip turds as they exit my ass, okay? If I had a dedicated shithole, I'd probably get tired of sanitizing it. My thing with having shit on my arm is that shit that's on my arm, if I don't clean that properly, that has a pretty high likelihood of ending up on my hands, which will end up on my desk, in my food, in my mouth, when I chew, whatever it is. And that's disgusting and not sanitary. If the shit, that my asshole, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm not ignore chat, I'm gonna really have a conversation, because somebody, you guys, there's bidet cope going on here. I don't even dislike bidet, as far as you can use it, but there is so much cope going on here about what bidets do. <clears throat> well, would you just leave shit on your arm and wipe with, no, because it's different. Okay, here we go. My, in between my ass cheeks is no man's land for touching, because that's where my asshole lies. And until I sanitize or soap my asshole, that is no man's land. You could spray water on it. You could do anything to it. It's no man's land because it is technically disgusting. Now, well, bidet, bidet. Dude, let me ask you a question. If a homeless person shit on your arm, are you gonna spray it with a hose and then wipe? No, you're gonna wash with soap and water or sanitize, okay? Quit this fucking cope that spraying water on your asshole makes it clean. Clean how? Clean how? There may be less poo, but it's not like, as far as germs go, let me, if you, you're not gonna eat a meal off your asshole after you bidet it. You would need to sanitize it. You would need to get in there. Wet does not equal clean, guys. Now, with that being said, when I wipe my ass with TP, when I just straight up get in there and wipe my ass with TP, my ass is not clean as far as germs. It's my, and I'll use the better word. My ass does not become sanitary. My ass is no man's land. If I start getting a little wet and wild, and let's say a girl wants to slip a finger in there, you know, I'm not gonna tell her, but I, there is some, listen, unless I just came out the shower, it's no man's land. If I, another example, if I go to scratch my asshole when I'm out in public, okay? My hand is now contaminated. I gotta wash that shit ASAP, so I won't do that unless I'm in the bathroom. Because my asshole is no man's land. Wubby, this is an L take. I'm a net positive for humanity. There I said it, and I'm not afraid to say it anymore. <laughs> Bro, you're actually cooking so hard? I know I am, because here's the thing. Bidet people think they have clean assholes. No, you have a power washed asshole, but that's not how germs work. That's the, the, I'm sorry, but, but ER fucking doctors don't go run their hands under bidet powered faucets. No, because it's not how you sanitize something. Yes, you have less poop in there, but the argument of if you had poop on your hand, would you not wash it? You're not soaping your asshole! You're just spraying water on it! Stop moving the goalposts. I'm not moving the goalposts. My original goalpost is that I don't like the feeling. I don't like it. Unless it's gonna, I don't know. Here's the bottom line. Unless my bidet is gonna come with aftercare, I don't want it spraying in my asshole. Is my bidet gonna cuddle me after? Answer me this. Is there a button on the Ludwig bidet that you can press after it does it? And is it gonna blow something up that we can go lay down and watch Netflix? Cause if not, I don't want it spraying in there. The Japanese ones do, well then they're ahead, okay? No shot, you soap your asshole every time you shower. What the fuck? Bro, 
Bro, you just out, you just fucked up for Team Bidet, you know that? All these Bidet boys are looking at you going, you're not Don't on our team anymore. Bro, no shot, you ass, you washed your ass, I almost said you asshole your soap. Yes, my man, I soap the shit out of my asshole, literally, when I shower. I soap the shit out of my asshole, and then, until the next time I poop, I'm walking on cloud nine knowing that if any time, if someone wants to rim me up, if I'm out in public, if, if someone comes up to me and goes, hey, bro, can I rim the shit out of you? I'd say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's this golden four or five hours after a shower where I am so clean and my asshole is so poop free that I'm down for anything. If you see me walking a little taller, chest a little out, shoulders a little back, just know my asshole is 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 clean. If you see me start to slouch, get a little more cagey to myself, it's because I didn't even get a full wipe in. True artisans use toilet paper for heavy lifting and then and baby wipes for the detail work. <laughs> Bro, I don't think I don't want anything with the name baby near my asshole. I'll keep it a buck. No, I hear baby wipes are like really bad for your toilet. That's why I don't do it. Straight up. Do you have skid marks? Butthole, butthole, butthole. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. I thrive in the skid mark. I, I, they, they call me skid mark marketplace. My underwear is, uh, <clears throat> it's like, it's like a, it's like an, it's like a, a road that hasn't been seen by the government in many years. This shit is just worn through. Sometimes I have to wipe for a while to get everything. With a bidet, you blast it all away. And you only use one or two sheets of toilet paper, and I never have to go back a second time yeah, just no, no, to no. clean. Yeah, no, no, chat. Before I move on, let me, let me be very clear. I understand that it sounds on paper. That uh, the bidet is just a, simply a more effective way of cleaning your ass. You cannot, though argue against my point, which is an opinion. I don't like the feeling of a bidet. I do not like that feeling. It's a feeling that makes me uncomfortable. It's a feeling that makes me, uh, uh, I don't enjoy that feeling. And so when I say that, I get two answers. Oh, that's fair. Or this insane bidet cope of, you're a child. No, I just don't like it, bro. I just don't like it. You know how you, half the chat didn't like cottage cheese and I did get mad at them and tell them they were babies? Just like that, you know? I just don't like the feeling. But you like blue cheese. Yes, bro. I like cheese. I like blue cheese and I don't like my asshole being blasted. So you enjoy reaching into... <laughs> See, this is crazy, Cope. So you enjoy reaching into your warm, poopy asshole with a piece of paper. No, I don't enjoy it. It's a necessary evil so I don't walk around with stink, poopy, swamp ass. What a stupid thing to say. Because here's the other thing, too. When it comes to wiping my ass, I get to choose the power level. Uh, and I choose very gentle setting with my own hand. I just get in there, you know? You can regulate a good bidet. I choose to believe people who use bidets dry their assholes by dragging them on the carpet like a dog with worms. <laughs> Dude, HP does that. HP, we, we've got him checked out. I just wanted to be clear. He does not have worms. In fact, he does not have anything. HP just loves rub. Didn't on. smell. You wouldn't wipe. Damn. This dude just brought up a really interesting point. I want to address real quick. Bro said, "If poo didn't stink, would you wipe?" Because you know, forced to shit or what is it? Born to shit, forced to wipe. I don't think I'd wipe. I don't think I would even buy into Big TP at that point. Because I believe I'm wiping my ass for society. I don't believe I'm wiping my ass for me. Okay, chat, let me ask you this. What if poo was clear? <laughs> Guys, can we stop? We, we gotta stop. <laughs> Why do you guys watch? <laughs> guys, what if poo was clear and smelled good? But it was still like poison. It was still straight up poison. But what if it was clear and smelled good? Oh, we gotta. Then stop it would that. still smell like shit. Bro, <laughs> you smell like shit. Thank you. Good talk. Hey, though. Wubby. That hey, what's guy's up? Dead dog here. I just found okay. out the other dog I was sniffing was playing fetch and going for walks with another dog. And your streams <laughs> have really helped me get over it. <laughs> Two girls, one cup wouldn't be as unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, they'd just be having fun. Really. Let's let's just call let's call let's all come together here. If bidets blasted with soap or sanitizing water, I think I'd be on board, and I would get past the the feeling of um of like I don't like the pressure in my asshole. Anyway, let's move on. That was fun. Good talk, guys. Hey, we can move on. Oh, hey, hello. Wubby Vod Boy here. Finally made it on time and wanted to say you're looking fine as hell today. Have a great stream. Also, stinky binky. 
I really don't even like you saying that. I, I just, like... It's just... Hey, Wubby, you're looking fine as hell today. So let's talk Vegas real quick. I went to Vegas, okay, to meet in person a few people that I am in business with who you will be finding out all about that later this year um, because the, the, everything is in motion. Um, but this was, I've been, so Alex and I have actually been working on something privately uh, uh, for a while now. And I haven't even alluded to it a single time, um, but it's it's resulted in weekly plus uh, meetings um, and it's a lot of fun and I'm extremely excited about it. Um, and it's with these business partners, but unfortunately it's something that I can't even tease. So I don't bring it up at all. So I can't, uh, so I'm not tempted to leak anything, but now at this point it's like, okay, why did I go to Vegas? Went to meet up with my other business partners, meet them in person. And it was really fun. Uh, it was a business slash like, let's get to know each other trip. You know, I mean, you go to Vegas, you have like the dinner where we all hang out and talk and actually talk business. And then you go get drunk and you gamble. And it was fun. So uh, yeah, that's what it was for. I do have a Vegas story. I have a couple I'd like to share with you. Get your sleep aid ready. None of them have interesting endings. As I told you guys on the magic stream, this is the first time I think I've ever been to Vegas and I, I'm up. I did great for myself. Uh, I was shocked. Normally I sit down right when I get to Vegas, I lose enough to be like, I'm done for the whole weekend. This is it. Um, but uh, I did great. I do have a, I have a story and it's a story of showing not only my growth, but my maturity. And it's also going to, people are probably going to be like, Wubby, you changed and I wish you hadn't. So I was at a blackjack table. Okay. We filled it up. Some, some, some key figures you might know. All right. Alex was there too. And then a bunch of people you don't know, right? Business people. And we're hanging out. And we get this dealer, and not to make things confusing, but I'm going to tell you, his name was also Alex. Now, if you guys remember, I have a story that people took online, and they tried to bastardize it. The story of where I tried to buy a dealer's job, right? If you watch that story, I've talked about this before, there's a lot of tongue-in-cheek, there's a lot of whatever, and, and, and I got into it with a dealer, and the dealer ultimately called over a pit boss, and the pit boss ultimately was like, listen... I side with my dealer, but also, hey, I get it. Just walk away. That's the long story short. And I, this presented itself again. And I want to say this. Blackjack dealers in Vegas, if you've never been, they are one of two people. One of three. There's the, there's the quiet type. I'm okay with that. All right? Then there is the overly nice. They want you to win. They're clearly in a good mood. I love these fucking dealers, right? They cheer for you when you win. They give you advice where it's needed. They don't make you feel like shit. They're awesome. And they deal fast. The third option is the dealer that I hate the most. And this was Alex. This was, this was, he was an old man. He was Middle Eastern. So Alex, uh, we're going to give him a different name actually, because it's confusing. There's too many Alexes. We're going to call him Bob. All right. So Bob, the Middle Eastern dealer, older guy. And already I didn't like him because he was a slow dealer. I get it. That's not going to make me, I'm not going to cause issues, but I hate it when they deal slow because just like, come on, Jesus Christ, right? Um, <clears throat> and everyone immediately noticed that Bob was a little rude. And the casino wasn't empty. So when we got a full table, we're like, let's not get up. Next time we get up, we're going to have to slowly take over a table. We didn't want to do that. So we were stuck with Bob. Bob was uh, not, he did not want to be there. Very little commentary. And when he gave commentary, it was rude. So, <clears throat> at one point, uh, Alex goes, uh, double down, face down. What that means is you double your bet, you get one card, right? And a lot of times what you do is you'll ask for it face down. It just adds a little more tension. Doesn't affect the outcome of the game. Doesn't mean anything. And uh, the dealer just said, nope, can't do face down. Which, by the way, isn't true. The whole weekend we were getting face down. Immediately we're like, okay, all right, dude. Like, we get it. You're an asshole. Whatever, fine, nobody cares. Moving on. <clears throat> that was the first little like, okay, this guy's kind of, he's not here for fun. Then Alex, man, it all comes back to Alex. Alex doesn't always play by the book. So if you don't know, Blackjack has a book of how to play as best odds as you can. And it gets you right up to like 49% win rate. Based on what the dealer is showing, based on what you're showing, 
It tells the book will tell you what to do. All right. And sometimes you can do this. Nobody cares, right? Sometimes you don't play by the book. Sometimes, oh, I feel it. I feel like I should stay here. I feel like I should hit. The book still gets you a loss ratio. It's not good. You shouldn't always play by the book, right? We controlled the whole table too, so Alex playing how she won didn't really matter. At one point, Alex takes a hit, and the dealer goes, has a huge reaction. He's like, you want to hit? And she's like, yeah, I want to hit. And he goes, I don't give a fuck. It's your money, I guess. And we're all like, Whoa, like, whoa. We all kind of look at each other like, whoa. Like, dog, how does this affect? Why do you care? Like, you're on an hourly, dog. Ultimately, her hit <clears throat> causes her to lose. He beats her in, in the hand. And as he's uh, gathering up the cards, he goes, I fucking told you. I told you. Keep in mind, heavy Middle Eastern accent. And I was just like, damn, this guy's not having it. Immediately, it kind of kills the whole vibe of the table. Here's where it gets crazy. All right, <clears throat> so it gets to me at one point, and it's my turn, and he says what I do when I, when I don't play by the book. He says, that was dumb as shit. He goes, that was dumb as shit. When I took a hit, when I, he goes, that was dumb as shit. And we're all like, eyes wide open. So then I, here's where I've changed. At this point, I would have been like, dude, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, stay in your lane. You're you, like... We're not bothering you. Can you just stay quiet? I don't need to lose money to you and then have the dealer insult me, my man. The whole point of the casino is to keep me comfortable while I lose money. You're making me uncomfortable while I lose money. As a joke, I'm kind of, and I say this to kind of lighten the mood. I go, Jesus, do you want my mother's name too? You want to make fun of her? He stops dealing. He looks me in the eyes and with the heaviest Middle Eastern accent, he goes, I don't give a shit who your mother is. And everyone's like, okay, all right. And I want everybody to know. At this point, you would have seen old Wubby go, all right, it's time to talk to your boss. Like, I'm getting, you're done. You're about to get fired, right? I'm gonna buy your fucking job. <laughs> Jump on the table and smack him. Everyone was taken back. We're like, okay. You're, you're, you're like, I was even trying to just lighten the mood because you're being so obnoxious. Here's why it's a less interesting story. You want to know what we did at that point? He collects his cards. Every one of us just gets up and we just all walk away. And then, of course, we do the thing. We do the hot gossip thing. We all go stand in a little corner and we go, that guy should kill himself. Oh, my God. Fuck. But we did. And I, I was talking to one of my business partners about it. And I told them the other story, and I'm like, I've learned that arguing with a dealer at a casino is a losing proposition no matter what. Because you argue with the dealer, the dealer calls a pit boss, the pit boss comes by, he will defuse, but ultimately he goes, just walk away. You're going to need to walk away. because. And I get it. I get siding with the dealer because they deal with the scum of the earth typically, right? These, these poor dealers must deal with drunk assholes. Let it be known, none of us were drunk. At all. None of us got like shwasted ever. More specifically, I wasn't drunk. Alex wasn't drunk. Um, and I knew that arguing with him would just be like, all right, I'm probably going to be argue for 30 minutes and then get told, listen, man, you can either leave the casino or gamble somewhere else. Those are your two options. Probably just had a YouTube streamer grudge. I don't think, he knew. dude, this guy was like, <clears throat> I'd guess this guy was like 50 and he was middle, spoke very like heavy accented uh, English. You report to the manager uh, and be on your way. It's not that complicated. I didn't even do that. We just walked. We just walked. Um, can you make up more interesting end for the story? Yeah, I got you. I'll, I'll give you guys a better end. Okay. So when he said that, I had a very small credit card, 22 in my pocket. It's a little gun disguised as a credit card. I was able to sneak it past security. I pulled it out and I grabbed Bob by his tie and I dragged him to the table. His face is now in the chips he was about to gather. And I pressed it up to his head and I said, listen here, okay? The last word you're gonna hear me say is my mother's name. And you're gonna take that with you in hell. And I pulled the trigger and a small flag that came out said, stinky binky. We walked away. We walked away. <laughs> Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. You like that? It's a better ending, isn't it? Everyone clapped. A very large-breasted woman came and picked me up and carried me in my room. And I'll have you know, we didn't even have sex. She tucked me in. It was great. So then, 
I did something at a casino I've never gotten done. Uh, I got a massage at the table. Did you guys know you could do this? These ladies come around. These these large-breasted women. They come around and they have a massage pillow. And if you're at a table for long enough, and let me tell you right now, the drinks are free, but tip these women because they'll come back and they'll be sweethearts to you if you tip them. Always tip them. And if you do that enough, they start bringing these mas massage ladies around. And they go, massage, $2 a minute, massage. It's more common in the poker room. Well, it happened, we were just on the floor playing blackjack. And so immediately Alex is like, ooh, ooh, I want a massage. She's got a bad back. She's always taking one, right? One of my business partners, he's like, I'll get one too. And I'm like, fuck, I'm, I've never done that before. So I got one. And um, my back is still a little sore from it. Uh, I've, I'm not someone who gets like weekly massages. I know some people do. I don't think I've ever even got a truly professional massage before. But at one point, she was giving me the uh, uh, the the people's elbow like in my shoulder. Oh, not you have not. Oh, so, okay. And I'm not being racist. That's how she sounded. She was lovely. I tipped her very well. She had braces. Uh, God bless her. She's doing well. Okay, but f oh, oh, you know all that shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so at one point, I was the, I took the L at the table at the risk of looking like the pussy. And this is important. At one point in my massage, I turned to her and I go, hey, a little lighter. Like it, it's hurting, a little lighter. It is the best decision I ever made. Let me tell you why. My business partner, who uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll put it like this. He's he's got money. I, I I'm gonna keep this. He's got some money. He's got some money. Um, during his massage, he said, listen, I want you to stay here for as long as I'm here. I'll pay you for the entire night. I want you to stay massaging me for the, and, she, and of course she's over the moon. She's like, holy shit, I'm now getting paid for the whole thing. Let's go, baby. And he tips her really well, takes care of her. All right, it was Mr. Beast, everybody. His penis was out. No. So my man next to me is just the entire time we're getting massaged and he's tipping. It's a great, it's like, you know those like, um, those little suction fish that suck on whales? He was the whale and she was the suction fish. He was getting cleaned, okay? She was getting mad tips. It was good. And he's, oh, oh, you're, you're saving, he was losing money, but he's like, oh, you're saving me, thank you. This is, this is worth losing the money. She was not, nothing sexual, she was, she was not actually sucking him, chat. So he's getting it, he's feeling great. That goes on for, I'd say maybe, I'd say that was close to a two hour massage. It was crazy, right? I, she pulled out moves that I had, mine didn't even do because I didn't hire her for long enough. She was giving him like head rubs and like deep into his back, like it was incredible. Side everything. Uh, keep in mind, I had to I had to tell mine to stop because it was hurting too much. Why are you telling us this? Well, go somewhere, asshole, dipshit. God damn, little Zoomer brain. You want to put up Subway Surfer so you don't fall asleep, little dipshit? We gamble a couple more places, and it's still early in the night. I'd say it's close to. I don't know, maybe 11, which is early for Vegas, right? And my business partner who got the massage goes, hey, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head back. I'm just going to call it. I'm, I'm tired. And I was shocked. I was expecting a whole night with him. And I'm like, okay, all right. We'll see you tomorrow. It's all good. Lunch tomorrow, whatever. <clears throat> so he heads back. We spend the rest of the night gambling. It's a great night. We meet up the next day. <laughs> and uh, he's he is... He gets out of the Uber at our meeting point and he is, oh God, he is walking as if there is a board attached from his like nape to his ankles. He's like, uh, or like, bro, are you okay? He goes and, and sits down in the nearest chair and it's like, ah, uh, we're like, holy shit. And he goes, guys, I'm, I'm actually not okay. <laughs> And we're like, what the fuck? Like, we didn't see you? We thought you went to bed. And he goes, let me tell you what happened. So now I'm going to tell the perspective, his story from his perspective. He's like, I get up to my room, and my chest and back are in so much pain. All I'm going to try to do is go to sleep <laughs> to sleep it off. He, try, he, he lays down. Next thing he knows, now his breathing is, is paining him to the point where after about an hour of laying, he cannot sleep, all right? So as time goes by, the pain has become unbearable. He calls the front desk. The front desk sends up, this is all from his perspective, a very foreign man who he still does not know what this guy does for the hotel. He's looking for any sort of like pain reliever, anything. 
The front desk guy looks at him and goes, we got to get you to the ER in a very foreign voice. I'm not going to do the voice. We have to get, we have to get you to ER. Okay. And he's like, no, no, I do not like, please don't take me. The dude calls an ambulance. My boy gets taken to the ER from a massage, bro. My boy goes to the ER. Okay. Has to spend, he spends like five, six hours there. The doctor's like, x-ray him they give him all these pills and they're like yeah whatever they did in that massage we think they bruised your ribs and caused like actual damage to your muscle you're gonna be okay but you're gonna be sore for like a couple fucking weeks <laughs> so i feel so bad for him because first off he he's such a good time to hang out with he's so fun and like it, it it was a fucking two and a half day Vegas trip and my boy he is night one this happened the first night he flew in that afternoon that night he got his back destroyed spent the night in the ER comes back the next day can't move can't walk that's Vegas baby she fucked him up and the whole time I'm sitting there going yeah my back is sore and I got one fifth the length of your massage and i told her hey can you go lighter yeah not a happy ending and he was like he was telling us about it he was like i'm kind of mad like what the fuck did that be? he's like i paid like 600 bucks for this woman to blow my back out <laughs> and like i genuinely feel like we have to meet up again because he wouldn't say it he was all like, hey, it was so great meeting you. Like, genuinely, outside of business, you guys are great. It's really fun. I know that man is sitting there in his head and just went, this was the worst trip I've ever been on. I am in immeasurable pain. I've only lost money this weekend. And now I may have uh, unfixable back damage. <laughs> I'm Like I said, I'm not a massage guy from like a professional standpoint. Like, I don't, I don't like like the Joe Rogan, you got to get a deep tissue massage. Let me warn everyone. Right I'm pretty now. sure Papa Poob had the same experience getting a massage in Vegas. Is this a poop story too? That I believe anyone who says this has happened to them. I actually, I wouldn't have believed this Two There are two things that happen that make me believe this. The first thing me getting massage that night too. the next day it happened at creator clash. I dude, I believe it because the next day for me, I had like a 20, 30 minute massage. My whole back was like, it's like I did the most insane back workout after not working out for six months. It was like, poof, my back was, but like now it feels, it feels okay now, right? I fully believe it that he was cooked because also then I, and I wouldn't believe it, one, if I didn't get the massage or two, if I didn't see him the next day, there was no like, you know, when people kind of lean into it, when you know people are watching and they're like, oh, oh, let me sit down. I had an eye on this guy for the next two days and I was like, oh my God, he's in so much pain. Do we get him a drink? Like, how do we? Alex was fine. You could, I think, I'm comfortable saying you could probably shoot Alex in the back with a shotgun slug, point blank range. Oh, thank you. God, it was a, oh, man. She probably assumed, because he he wanted such a long massage, that this was like a guy who gets him, who likes the deep tissue shit, um, licensed massage therapist. Let me tell you right now, this woman... I would bet a lot of money this woman did not have a license, okay? I don't think anyone with a license, you can see their areola. That's on God. No offense to her, by the way. All sweethearts. They were all super nice, and I respect them. I'm sure they have to touch some gross-ass dudes. So I was just happy they were at our table where, like, all, none of the dudes were looking to hook up with any fucking massage lady. We were all clean. Also, they were ladies were clean, right? So at least they were here, but God, you know there's some, like, drunk guy. Hey, sweetheart, come here! Like, just grow. Oh, yeah, get in there! Like, so I get it. They have a tough job. Um, would you ever give someone a massage? It, not in, like, a professional sense, but, like, yeah? Who hasn't? Hmm. Is it gay? I used to give my dad massages. Is that gay? Same? Yeah, that's, that, um... That's on you, bud. Did you touch his balls? No. I did not touch his butt, believe it or not. No, I mean, my dad, like, when I was younger, dad gets off work, you know? My dad's tired, work a full day. No, I, I'd, you know what? Give a little shoulder squeeze. My stepdad would always offer to give me and my sister massages. Wow! Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. 
I genuinely believe a stepfather has the capacity to give an honest massage to his stepdaughters. Okay, I believe there are men out there who have the capacity to do that in a non-weird way. However, instant red flag. It, it, now, red flag doesn't mean wrongdoing, but that is immediately I go, huh? They did what? How old were you? What, huh? what was the nature of the massage? I used to massage my grandpa. <laughs> this sounds so terrible. I was 12 when we started back in hip massages. Okay, see, red flag just turned into uh, uh, a problem. Your stepdad gave you and your stepsister hip massages? See, I can tell you right now, the massages that were exchanged in my family house were like, if my okay, my dad, right? We'd be watching Survivor. And I give my dad like a shoulder, like get in there, get the shoulder, upper back, right? I don't even think ever I went past mid back. Giving a like a stepdaughter a hip, what is even a hip massage? I gave my dad massages. Um, you couldn't have waterboarded me for that information. Oh, if I gave my dad massages, you couldn't have. Is that really like? Maybe it's more Middle Eastern then, because I'll tell you right now that that. I don't, I, I hate to say this, chat. I don't find it, I find it weird to say, okay. I'm gonna teach you guys a little something about, about the internet. Twitch chat and the internet makes things that are in real life difficult. But I'm telling you right now, me sitting here, if I was sitting in a room with a friend talking about this, I would not find it weird at all to say out loud and talk about. But saying it on a live stream in front of a Twitch chat knowing how the internet works, there's no way to deliver the line. Yeah, I gave my dad like shoulder massages when I was younger. That doesn't sound weird. And that's because the internet fucks everything up. But, and, and now I'm thinking with how many people are reacting, maybe it, I don't know if it's a Middle Eastern thing, but it was, it was from my dad and then my dad's dad, my grandpa, who is King Middle East. Let me tell you right now. That man, if you think of every worst stereotype about the Middle East, that was dad's dad. That was, that was grandpa. Love him. God bless him. God rest his soul. But he was the one who was like, he had this old, oh my God, holy shit, brain blast. He had this like, it was like, um, God, it looked like an iron. Hold on. It's an old like shit you'd see from the 40s massager. It had like two handles on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? This thing was, oh my God, here it is. Dude, there is no way. My grandpa, remember King Middle East, had one of these fucking things. And if ever my grandpa was babysitting, he would be like, we're gonna, we're fucking doing this shit, okay? And he would just lay, again, nothing weird, right? No, no dick play, just all upper back shoulders. And it felt very Middle Eastern, to say the least. Hit my man's house smelled like spices. That's a sander. No, sir. No, sir. It just, and you take it, shoulders, back, shoulders, back, flip them over, suck them off, flip them back over, shoulders. These fucking things... It looks insane. This is such a brain blast to see. It looks insane. This motherfucker is good. Let me tell you right now, because here was the whole thing, right? Grandpa would want one, and in exchange, if I give, if I do, if I do grandpa's back for five minutes, I get one minute on my back. Ooh! Oh, how does it work? Um, there's a big ass like, co like a cockpit switch here, like this, and it. Flick it, and then the whole thing just, and you just rub it into the person. It's not rocket science here, chat. It just, what is a massager at its core? What is a massager at its core? It vibrates on your clit. Okay, I saw someone in chat just say, um, I want to sit on it. I'm going to be honest with you, chat. My grandpa did babysit more than once, and I'm going to be honest with you. Um... I don't need to go that far. I don't need to be honest with you. Okay, so that, yeah, that happened to my, my business partner, and um, I gotta be real. Prayers and chat for him. It was, he did not have a good time, and it broke my heart to see. I remember we are at dinner, and he couldn't get comfortable. <laughs> and he goes, I need a drink now. I need a few. <laughs> I was like, this was supposed to be fun. And I remember throughout the whole trip, Every time, like, more and more people who didn't hear him tell the story originally, they're like, are you okay? He's like, and he goes, honestly, I'm not. <laughs>
I can't imagine paying for it, right? And then the next time we were gambling, someone comes up and he's like, stay the fuck away from me. And he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes, stay the fuck away from me. And then he immediately goes, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Booty said, uh, if your boner doesn't last for more than four hours, let me get you more pills. Booty, if it does last for more than four hours, you want to help me? Oh my God, I just remembered something. I didn't even have this written down. After all of our massage talk, I had a masseuse yesterday. Oh, it was a disaster. Oh my God. I, I, I wasn't even prepared to tell the story. I totally forgot about it. She did not jerk me off. I want to be very clear about that. Very respectful too. Cap'n, this, this, you, save the cap'n because this is where it gets worse. Um, I forgot about this. No happy ending. Also like, I don't know. I kind of, if it's going to be a happy ending, I don't want her to speak English super well. I feel like it gets, it's too personal that way. I, Have you tried boner honey? Guys, I promised myself at the top of stream today, I promised myself I would not go down a chat rabbit hole. I think I have to lie to myself. I can't not Google boner honey. Extra strength MGL honey pack for men. Contains to, to, to delawful. That sounds like a pastry. The active ingredient uh, in Cialis. Oh! You can get Cialis honey? Time if you're to allergic to bees, you can just stick your dick in a beehive and get it. Okay, we're muting these for a couple minutes so I can just tell this massage story. And I want to be clear, nothing interesting about the massage. All right. Um, just, you know, I, 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 you know, exciting, but nothing crazy, right? There was a lovely, uh, she played Life of Pi music. It was lovely. All right. That being said, she shows up, and uh, I'm hanging out with my brother, and I requested a, <laughs> I, I request, I requ okay, so here's my, here's my fear, right? My biggest fear when getting a full massage in my underwear, and I'm just going to be very vulnerable with you guys right now, okay? My biggest fear is getting a boner. Um, I... I have to be real for a second. It's all funny to make fun of uh, uh, happy ending jokes, but I'm a human outside of my stream character, okay? And the human in me does not want that level of discomfort to be on anybody. You know what I mean? It would, it just, it. I feel bad. I would feel so embarrassed. You know what I mean? Here's what everyone's gonna say. The professionals in chat, I don't have to look. They're gonna go, it's normal. It's natural and professionals will handle it professionally. Wow. No, but, and I get that. None of that takes away that I'm just like, that's my penis. Um, so I requested an older woman. <laughs> oh God. I requested an older woman uh, in, in, the, in the ordering of it because originally, this is going to sound crazy. Originally it was a young dude. And I went, that's a disaster. If I... Pop Chub, when he's getting in on my legs, that is going to be just, I feel like that's almost as bad as any other situation for me. Uh, so I didn't want a young, like, hot dude. I'll be honest, okay? And then also, like, a young lady, I feel like that's going to be equally as uncomfortable for her as it is for me. And I felt weird about it. They're used to it. It happens. They're not, though. If I get a boner when I'm getting massage, the room will start to fill. She may very well suffocate, my man. It's not, if anything, I'm do. that's why I want an older woman. She's lived her life. If she dies to my penis filling the room, you know, at least she can go, like, I li she'll mem remember all the time she spent with her family and everything. I did not get an older woman, ultimately, uh, but I, I got... I, I, I'm not, listen, I'm going to keep it vague because God forbid this woman watches stream, but it was like, you know, like a middle-aged woman and she was, you know, she was a, a, this is important for the story. And I promise you, I wouldn't be saying this unless it was directly relevant to the story. She was a larger woman. Okay. And she, and this is the part where I was going to go, why is that relevant? Please let me finish the story because there's one aspect of it. She was black. Okay, great. Doesn't matter. Not relevant at all until I get to the point where it matters, okay? She was she was a large black woman. Great. Good for her. Love her. Glad she's here. I, there's a There was a green screen in the way. She had to set up a table, and there's a green screen, so I had to move the green screen. So I take this, like, seven-foot green screen. It's one of the pop-up ones, and I lean it up against the wall. 
and Nurse Lickumlow. God, I wish. She was the best. She was my favorite ever. Um, and she's like getting ready and everything. And as I'm getting ready too, after I put the green screen up, I hear the sound of like uh, uh, plastic sliding against a textured wall. And before I have the chance to react, I hear a gasp and a crash. And this is two minutes into meeting this woman. The green screen f just completely topples into the back of, you know when someone's walking and you kick the back of their knee and they get all funny? Right into the back of her leg, Whoa! And I turn and I'm like, immediately my thought is, just kick this woman out of your house. Pay her and tell her to leave. I can't now sit here and get 60 minutes of her rubbing me because now what if I get a boner, right? 60 minutes are facing me of a massage from this woman and a green screen just hit her in the back of the leg. She didn't fall. And, and of course, like, I didn't know what to do. I panicked. I immediately like run over. Oh my gosh, are you okay? And she's, she's being nice about it, chat. So she tells me, oh, it's totally fine. It, it barely hit. Like, if, it, I'm not hurt at all. There's nothing, yada, yada. I'm terrified. I'm like, I fucked this up. This is so bad. And then... Now I'm even more worried because she goes, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And I'm uh, profusely appalled. Are you okay? Can I get you anything? She's like, no, 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 please, please. It's totally fine. Like she's clearly wanting me to still be relaxed for this. Okay. Here's why it's important that I described her. So then she goes, but I will ask, is there a restroom I can use? And I'm like, yeah. And I, I walk her and point her to the restroom in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh God, she's going into the restroom. She's going to message her boss. She's going to have a huge gash on her leg that she's going to inspect. And uh, I'm panicking. I let her into the bathroom. She goes, and I'm just freaking out while she's taking five, ten minutes in there. Okay. I don't know what she's doing. I'm not listening. I'm just doing my own thing. She comes out of the bathroom, and I have a realization. Before she exits the bathroom, I realize something that we have displayed in our bathroom. I'm going to go grab that thing right now. So... One thing that I've dealt with over the years, one thing that I've dealt with over the years is my chat likes to send me things that people in my sphere will find funny. And then I'll let people into my home to do some, like maybe I'll have a cleaner, maybe I'll have somebody working on the house and I'll realize, holy fuck, this doesn't work for everybody else. So for one, I have a sign in the bathroom that says, please don't do coke in the bathroom from a uh, P.O. Box stream. It's in the bathroom. I think it's funny. I remember, uh, I think, was it Aaron Hansen? Either it was Aaron or Meat Canyon. When they came out of the bathroom, I don't remember which one said it, but they walked back in. They go, I just did so much coke in there. And I was like, what? And they're like, because the sign. Ah, I got really scared. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, that sign's there. I forget about these things. You know, I see them every day. There's another thing. It's not hung up in the bathroom, but here's the sink mirror behind it and a whole counter leaned up so in order to pump the hand soap you have to see this leaned up against the mirror the corner and in front of the hand soap or behind the hand soap is uh something somebody sent us still in its wrap it is uh <clears throat> i'll just show you it's black king nutritional facts now i made this realization at about the same time, this lovely, lovely black woman was exiting my bathroom. And I think I made this realization because at the same time, as she's coming out, she's laughing, shaking her head. And I think that's when it all hit me. So I gave the bathroom a couple minutes. You never want to run into a bathroom right after somebody did what if they just blew it up, right? And I'm like, oh God, please, maybe it's not there. Maybe, maybe she didn't see it. And I go in and it's just sitting, it's pr like, it's not possible to miss. I will say, though, my audience has sent me, um, unfortunately, horrible shit, racist shit, right? Like, there was, I remember somebody sent me joke book of the most racist Mexican jokes, right? And it was, because we, we, shit like that we throw out, and we'll do like a big order, got junk to do big removal of it, because we fill, we fill up our trash cans too quickly. And that was sitting on the counter when my maids came one time, and they stacked it nice, nice and, and, and neatly. And I'm like, no, I'm not racist. I, it's just, no, I have an audience who is. You don't understand. They pay this house and everything. They pay, the, the racist people pay for it. And now you clean it. Um, anyway, but I will say, this isn't the worst thing to have your beautiful black masseuse walk in on. If any, I start, this is me totally like coping and trying to justify it, right? 
I'm like, well, if you if you read it, this is all. I mean, this beautiful. Me, look at confidence. Mel, okay, melanin, hundred percent is kind of. I mean, that's okay. Confidence, strength, loyalty. Look, zero percent foolish. And here's, I guess, the end of the story here to summarize. It went well. She. Uh, uh, here's where I'm a little like uh, about it. When somebody rips ass at dinner, and nobody mentions it, that makes my skin crawl, right? But when somebody farts accidentally at a dinner and they bring attention to it, it's funny. I can laugh about it and then we can all kind of poke fun and then we all move on. Her not saying a fucking word about this, it's all that's on my mind. And I'm not going to be like, okay, now picture this chat. Here's why I'm rocking a hard place here. Picture this. How do I go? You see the sign, sweetheart? <laughs> like, what the fuck do I even say? You see the, hey, you see the sign? <laughs> She thought it was funny. I think she did. She was young enough to be like, to think it was funny. But it's also weird that it's just like, it's all just a bunch of white people in the house. Like, why would we have this? I don't know. Um, she comes out and you have a crown on. <laughs> I will say though, lucky for her, like awkward exchanges like this. The only thing I know how to do is be like, here's a bigger tip. You know, you did great. Thank you. I'll leave five stars, baby. Anything you want. I got you. Which I'm sure is all she wants. She's thinking maybe you have a black roommate. Oh my God, you're so right. That is so amazing. That makes me feel so much better. Yes, yeah, so my my black wife was... Well, that actually wouldn't work either. Uh, my black boyfriend. Ooh, that would be really based, right? Oh, it's my my husband's, uh, you, you know. He's, he's a brown king, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What can I say, huh? No, nobody nobody said a fucking word about it. I forgot about this, too. I didn't think I was going to tell you. Queer baiting, and I will continue to queer bait. Call 911. Tell them what I've done. As a black person, I can tell you that I would have found it fucking hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're black. My blusband. <laughs> Why did I read that? I'm sorry, chat. The one black Wubby viewer. Hey, he, my man in chat spoke. Okay, that's that's brave enough. We appreciate you. So yeah, that's uh, stop sending me shit like this because I do decorate the home with it. Um, because I'm I don't think that far ahead. I go, this is funny in the bathroom. You know what? For I'm gonna cope even harder. For all I know, chat, she was laughing at the coke sign in the bathroom. For all I know, she didn't even see it. Maybe you know, maybe she meant, maybe she was looking at the coke sign. Ha <laughs> ha, that's so funny. Was your N word pass displayed? Okay, hold on. I, I have to tell you this. That used to be displayed proudly in my living room. Like, centerpiece. The N-word pass from Uncle Kenroy. Just, just this very, like, proud. I took that shit down so early because it, like, I think it was just even, like, the AC guy was over. Just, like, the most basic-looking white guy of all time. And I'm like, I don't want him getting the wrong idea. <laughs> you know? I don't want him to be like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, no, 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 bro, it's all a meme, dude. Like, no, no, no. I took that shit down quick. Sorry. Sorry, Camroy. I still, it's dear to me, but I don't display it. Mine's hanging in my bathroom to look at when I pee. That's good. That's Damn, safe, Damn, you though. used it That's that safe. fast. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, AC guy, I want to see something cool. I point to the sign, and then I just drop it. And he goes, oh, okay, yo, okay. Tonight at 6, a local autistic deranged hermit maims a masseuse's leg, causing irreparable damage. But, as she tells NBC7, that is nothing compared to the psychological trauma she endured in this quarter's house for racist memorabilia. Be warned, racist San Diego, memor the suspect I'll is still be, at large. This is the Lord least six. racist thing in my home. Anyway, all right, that's my, that's all, that's all for, I have for streaming tonight, guys. Thank you.